Those top producers, they always nail everything. Tight low amp, interesting sound design, and those crispy hats. But how? How do they do it? To understand how, we are gonna break apart their tracks. I'm lately playing Heroes of Might and Magic 3 and listening to Techno Bunker. There is one track that I kind of obsess lately, and it's the Feel It from Emily Lance. First classic Breeze Techno Low End, not Rolling Bass Land, right? And then it has like real rich high end, but this is not what I'm liking it. The reason I really enjoy it more is this. It's kind of returned back to the old school progressive techno. And before you said trance, no, I don't think this is a trance track. And stop saying trance to everything that you hear. I was making a little tutorial, people come say, and this is trance. When I make like 120 BPM techno track, people come and say, this is trance. 135 techno track, people come say, this is trance. No, those are not trance tracks. Okay, let's get over this. <laughs> Educate your social circle. It can be frustrating when people mislabel music genres. You see, my AI overload understands me. <laughs> it's important to respond with a balanced and constructive attitude. My dear subscribers and viewers of this video, it's important that we address this issue very carefully. Not everything is trans, okay? Okay, let's go back. The thing that I want to address is this melody. Can you feel the bass? You feel that urgency with the melody. It actually comes from changing the rhythm inside the melody. The first phrase of the melody goes a bit more relaxed. But then it turns into like eight notes repeating suddenly at the end of the phrase. Sound wise, it's pretty simple if you consider it. It's just like a salt right? It's a ping pong delay. And the way the entertainment is created is by just simple color automation. And then, let me hear. Dance with me. We just one octave up here. And I think we are opening up the attack a little bit so that we have a bit more. And then, of course, a nice vocal from Emily Lance. Dance with me. How do I know? She posted a video about it on her Instagram. I think it was a story. I remember her singing the song. By the way, how cool is it that she is pregnant and she is still really banging? Before you start commenting on, it's fine. I know that she is like turning off the monitor. So when you turn off the monitor on the stage, it's actually quite all right. You can easily hear people talking to each other. Good job, Emily. Next. Okay, this is another cool take that is kind of popular at the moment across the genres. This is Tech House. I actually really knew when it comes to Tech House. I don't know, for example, who Odd Mob is. But it's not about the artists, it's about the music. How do they do it? It's actually much easier than you would guess. What you need is an arpeggiator and a good sound. Where you find good sound, you go to Mercurial Tones. All the good sounds are there. Let's bring in a serum. It's playing this spooky, spooky sound sharp region with the C in it. <laughs> Why is it sounding so spooky? The thing is, it's not about the scale itself, it's, it's more about the, the name, the official name. One eternity later. Intervals. <laughs> what would I do with that AI? So it's not about the scale anyways, it's about the intervals. We are using like semitone here, semitone there, and big jump in between. It's about five semitones, right? This is a pretty straightforward soft to with head of reverb. Tons of delay on it. I think it's a bit distorted as well. And then we can EQ probably. Forget about the sound, it doesn't matter even, it's just a soft to anyways. If you want this one to go this like a waterfall effect you can either go for the rate but this will be a bit abrupt like you can make it much smoother if you go for non-sync version and then goes into a <laughs> so that's it, simple. By the way, did you know you can get all these project files, pieces and everything down below on my Patreon. Check that out. All right, I got my new coffee. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It looks like 
I'm a coffee addict. I'm not. I mean, two liters of coffee every day. That's normal, right? What else do you have, you top producers, that we can take apart? How to do that rolling bass line. It's not like straight 16 rolling bass line. It's more like relaxed, more groovy rolling bass line. How do you do it? It's super simple, of course. That sounds a lot like my smooth kick samples. Can probably use this one and just add that noise layer on top. Let's rip that at that top layer. So we have kind of similar tamra. I mean, it's very good. Maybe he's using my sample, you know? I'm just saying. Anyways, the bass. I think there's two layers, the bass and the sub bass and the high end. Sounds a little bit like pigments here. Can do it from scratch, but probably we don't need to. Probably made it already. If we go to our top 60 and go for the bass. Basically repeating pattern of half bar. Let's make it a bit more snappier. This is the bass layer. I'm gonna take it off because I'm gonna make it separately. This is basically the analog. Single layer. And we take the unison so that it's in the middle. See the distortion amount. I think there is like a bit more opening. Simple way to do it, you can take function and do it this way so it goes up. Remember, it was the half bar repeating pattern, so I'm gonna put it to half bar running mode. So that we have free running. This one's function one, but on. You can probably use it like this, more aggressive. Then you can hear the delay on it, listen. Here, I'm gonna just take an echo, create a chain. This is the regular chain. Bring the echo 100%, ping pong, filter the highs. Kind of reverb. And you can side chain the kick so that we can feel the groove here as well. And then the final part will be the sub bass. I'm gonna take this, put one octave. This will be very low, be careful, because it's almost around here that we can't hear anymore. Take off all the effects. The main difference here is that when you have your sub, you want to have sustain. Go to my envelope, bring up the sustain, quite... Bring the razor down. I mean, even bring the envelopes down, so it's much more stable, static sound, right? Gonna get this one much more aggressive. It's really pumping together. Right? The only problem that I see with this one is, is the bass is on the C. I really don't enjoy C bass lines because I think they are so deep. For some consumer speakers, it's really hard to reproduce. So pick something else. Pick F, G, A, something a bit more above. But other than that, you have our rolling cool bass line. Super simple. If you are seeing this, you are probably enjoying the video. Please consider like and subscribe, it really helps a ton. This track was super popular and super hype, very cool lead sound as well. The melody actually made from the delay, even though it doesn't sound like it is made from the delay. Let me show you. I actually worked on this already for my upcoming Melodic Techno preset pack. So unfortunately, I won't share this one on my Patreon because I need some heavy hitters for my preset pack so that you buy it, okay? First of all, the sound is made by a lot of distortion and noise. You see how much noise in it? And then we have these super soft on them. And together they bring in this like I mentioned earlier, the sound is actually made of a lot of distortion. The distortion. And then we have the OTT on top, creating the dynamics. Now, if I take the delay, you will immediately understand why I said that sound is made because of the delay sound. You see? So those extra parts actually delay delaying over itself. 
Kevin DeVries used a lot of distortion in this track. In section not only melody, if you listen to the track itself, there is a pure distortion on the low and on the mids and everywhere. It's like really booming. You can hear that pure tape distortion on the low and in everywhere. I think there's a good lesson to understand. If you are going for this kind of very heavy hitting track, distortion is your friend. And kind of this extra saturated master could be something that you want to have rather than something that you want to avoid. Keep that in mind. All right, this one is super cool. I wouldn't probably found this one if there was not for the techno bunker. The thing that makes this track so cool is the vocals over here. The reason I picked this up is just to show you the styles and trends disappear and come back. I hear out of Crystal Castles. They are one of the like more iconic bands or duos in music history. Very classic. The reason I bring this up, I really want to make this type of melodic techno for a really long time. It's a bit hard to find this type of post-punk vocals, especially if they have kind of a German accent. It's just cherry on top. So if you can do this type of vocals, we can make a really cool track together. Okay, please reach out to me. Okay, this is very interesting for me. You hear this, I would call very famous melodic techno chord on the background. We hear it. This chord progression actually is super melancholic. It's one of the most melancholic chord progressions that you can have. And super simple. Let me show you. Let's bring in a serum. The simplest way to do it is like, I'm gonna just get the filter, put the deep. Let's give it a bit chorus and reverb. It is very funny, but let me show you what I'm playing on the keyboard. Look how simple that is. To be honest, this chord progression works extremely well when you keep it super simple like this. Two notes, two chords, works warmer. Let's say we wanna spice this up. Additional thing could be like a chord progression on the bass, four bars progression. Can make it even more coherent if you put them one octave down. Everything one octave up. If you duplicate this, duplicate this one more time. Let us consume this. And then develop. It's so gorgeous, it's amazing. I can pick another preset that has a bit more movement. My crew tones, the best one ever. How dramatic is that? Put a beat under it, two channels, isn't this gorgeous? Dark like every producer's soul. By the way, it's actually hard for me to look exactly what type of breakdown that you want the songs, the hats, or the drums. Please do let me know on the comment section below for the future videos what you want me to take a look. Okay, another Rufus track. This is interesting because I know people do the same low end all the time, but this is a really cool one because it's really just a tom sound with a pretty long kick. Take a look at the waveform. This one, the distance between the sound waves are longer, so it means that it's a low end, so low keys, right? You are seeing like a long kick on top of a tom and then kick, tom, kick, tom, kick, tom. So this is all the low end. If you remember two years ago, there was a debate between what the kick should be and then people were saying techno using the long kicks. I was trying to say it doesn't matter which genre that you are using, it really depends on the track that you are making. This track is progressive house, deep house, you wouldn't see long kicks in this type of tracks. It's like half of the quarter bar so for the bass nothing left and later on when the chord progression comes there's a really single sub bass layer under it it is really on the background so it's very heavily side chain to kick the kick and this tom is the main low and hence the kick can have a very long tail and very tonal tail and sounds still super crisp and clear tail is settling down around f sharp somewhere around here and if you take a look at the major minor scale you will see that the perfect fifth of the c is g and i think this one was in c major right so you're utilizing perfect fifth for the kick so it can carry out this tonal melodic tone still there is a very important lesson 
your kick length really depends on the track that you are using not only genre but the track that you are making what type of low and you have if you want to learn more about the per producers tricks i have a video over here take a look